This episode is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the mythical series Analog Interconnects. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Let's do some comments because, what, four days ago, we put up a video about the new Wim Pro streamer. So like the bigger, badder brother to the uh, the Wim Mini. And the Wim Pro will sell for $150 when it goes on sale, either the end of this month, although there's not many days left, or the beginning of next month. And the Wim Mini sells for $100. I mean, I still think the Wim Mini is the sweet spot, really, for value for money, but... I understand that some people, you know, want the benefit of a coax connection or an Ethernet input or Google Chromecast support. And that WinPro video has done almost 70,000 views in four or five days, which is really very, very impressive indeed. So thank you to everybody that watched. Thank you to everybody that left a comment. I've just been through the comments. I've just pulled out, I think maybe, maybe 10, maybe 11. There's a group of them about one topic which I'm going to tackle in the middle. And in case you're not familiar with this kind of video, I put the comments that I want to talk about into a Google Doc on my iPad, I read them out, and then I give my thoughts. So the first comment comes from a chap called Tim Donk. And he writes, quick question, is the coaxial output fixed or does it have digital volume control? Well, the answer is you can do both. You can fix the volume output at its maximum level, and you do that inside the Wim Home app, or you can disable that and then have the volume slider do the volume controlling for you. And that works for both the analog outputs and the digital outputs when you're feeding an external DAC. Although, me, I always have the, the full volume setting engaged, so basically I, I sort of disengage the volume control inside the Wim device, and then I control volume with my DAC or with my preamp, which is here. Okay, next comment comes from Ashikuts, and he writes, I think it's a he, could be a she, does the Mini play bit perfect slash CD quality, or is that available on the Pro only? No, it's available on the Mini as well. So Wim have been very good, yeah, really good with firmware updates to kind of roll out bit perfect playback, and they did that to the Mini, I think, a few months ago. So it's bit perfect no matter what you play and whichever digital output you use. So it's true for the Wim Pro and the Wim Mini. So David Jackson writes, Hi John, I hope you're well. Please could you tell me slash us if the Wim Pro's RCA, optical and coaxial outputs can all be active at the same time as I'm looking at possibly hooking one up to three systems. Three. Uh, well, that's a bold aim, I think, David, but alas, you cannot because in the Wim Home app, you must specify one of the four, I'll come to that in a minute, the four outputs that the, the Wim Pro give us. And those outputs are analog RCA or Toslink, which Wim calls Spidiff. And then on the Pro, we also have the option for coaxial. And then the fourth output, which I didn't mention in my first video, and perhaps I should have done because it could relate to TV viewing, is that there's also a Bluetooth output as well. So you can feed whatever you need to feed into the Wim Pro and then have it Bluetooth out to a pair of Bluetooth headphones. But I think that's pretty much an edge case unless, you see the thing is with the Blue Sound node it's not because you can HDMI in, into the back of a node and then Bluetooth out into a pair of headphones. Here I guess you could Toslink into the Wim Pro and then Bluetooth out into a pair of headphones. But hold that thought, because we're coming back to it, because I've got a spicy finding to share with you. Chris Joint writes, Loving the continued coverage on Wim products. I bought one early this year, after the recommendation from this channel, and I agree the software support makes this one of the best buys in streamers today. 
Worth noting, WIM has released a software update that allows for MQA support on Tidal. It will process the first unfold on, on the device or pass through the raw MQA file to your DAC if it supports MQA decoding. And that's great for people that enjoy MQA. If you don't, move along. Nothing to see here. And if you do, that's great. That's an extra bit of intel that maybe would encourage you to look closer at the WIM Mini or the WIM Pro. Okay, in my WIM Pro video, I asked whether you thought the WIM Mini would be disqualified from being my sort of streamer of the year, streamer of 2022, because technically it was released in November of 2021. And I've got three comments here. I'll read them all straight out and then I'll give you my thoughts. So Peter Comer writes, I think the title favorite streamer of 2022 can go to any product still on sale in 2022. It could be a model from 2018 if nothing more recent has surpassed it since. I view best of the year lists as ego boosts for manufacturers, whereas reviewers favorite XXX of the year is about the user's experience and preference. I have some thoughts about that. Next one comes from film nerd Corey. He writes, I think you should consider your favorite of the year you used it in. And if there's a 10 year old product like the squeeze box that still kicks butt, then by all means, it can still be a favorite of 2022. I've been using the Win Mini for a few months now and it beats Chromecast, I think he means the Chromecast audio puck, in ease of use, gapless and being rock solid. The Chromecast was always a gamble whether it would actually work or not. And then some guy writes, I think the Win Mini should be included in the 2022 awards. Yes, it was released in 2021, but its impact has mainly been in 2022. It was during 2022 that it became popular and became gapless. Its release was 2021, but it's a product of 2022. Also, it's just bloody brilliant. Man, cut it some slack, ha ha. They've really done something special by opening up streaming to affordable systems without the finicky use of a pie. And I agree, yes, without the finicky use of a pie, it's great. Um, as for the consideration for my favorite of 2022. Well, the reason I call it a favorite is because I haven't used every single streamer even released in 2022. I don't think there were that many actually, certainly not this price point, but keeping abreast of all of the streamers released, let's say no matter what the price point, in 2022 and assessing them because they have to be assessed here to qualify. That's a key rule for me really. For me to declare a favorite or a best of, I have to have used it here. Not necessarily reviewed it, but used it here for an extended period of time. Now, I've only used a couple of streamers this year and I think only the whim is able to qualify for 2022 award assignation, even though the mini was, yeah, the end of 2021. So I think really it needs, the whole thing needs containing within a certain year, because if you say, okay, let's open it up to all streamers in the last five years. Well, that's even more streamers that I've got to keep abreast of and have here to test, right? Now, if I can't possibly manage all streamers released in 2022, then I've got no hope of keeping abreast of everything released this year, last year, the year before, the year before that, the year before that, and the year before that. Not a chance, which is why I think many publications restrict their awards to the year. Because the thing is, if we don't, right, let's say we open it up to the last five years and I say the Win Mini is blah, 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 my favorite best streamer of this year, of 2022. I'll get tons of comments, tons of what about us saying, what about this streamer? What about this streamer? How does the Win Mini compare to that streamer? You see what I mean? It's impossible to keep up. So keeping it all tight in one year makes it a bit easier for people like me to give something a little bit meaningful or hopefully meaningful to you, the viewer, without me losing my mind trying to deal with the requests for all of the, the different considerations and also keep abreast of everything because streamers is not all that I review as you probably noticed. So imagine having to do that, you know, like keep abreast of all the stand mount speakers for the last five years and all the integrated amplifiers for the last five years. You couldn't even do it as one person for one category. It's just not possible. You've seen how much I'm struggling with just keeping up with Bluetooth headphones, noise cancelling Bluetooth headphones, right? And that has been a, a real task. 
So as much as you might want something to be, oh, this, we want the assessment of this in the context of everything for the last five years, it just ain't possible. I'm sorry to say it. I really wish it were. So the upshot is, is I'm going to be saying my favorite products of 2022 are ones where the majority of their debut year took place in this year. So the WIM Mini squeaks in, I guess. So yeah, it is my favorite streamer of 2022. All right, back to some more sort of more technical comments. Hardeep Singh writes, I'm surprised they didn't add a USB, but 150 isn't bad to be honest. Coax is really helpful for us who use the optical out for our CD players into our DACs. I think what Hardeep means here is that the, the optical in on his DAC is already occupied by his CD player. And so having a coax out on the WIM Pro allows him to connect that to his DAC as well. Because as I said, I think the WIM Mini and the WIM Pro really are best served when connected to external DACs. Next one comes from Ruben van Enemy. Enemy, I don't know how you say that, I'm sorry. And he writes, will the retail version come with a Bluetooth remote or will it need to be separately purchased? And then Ruben edited his comment saying, answer for myself, voice control remote will be separately available on the same time and can also be used with the Win Mini. Now I didn't know that, but in between Ruben's first comment before the edit with the answer, I panicked a little bit thinking, shit, did I miss the remote in the box. I went scrambling through the box again just to make sure that I hadn't and I did breathe a deep sigh of relief when I realized there was no remote in the box. Okay, next one is a long one. It comes from Sneaky DS and he, he writes, you did say that you're not an Amazon Music subscriber, but for those who are, the Win Mini is unique in the market in allowing users to cast high res up to 24192 from the Amazon Music app using Amazon's Alexa Cast, their version of Spotify slash Tidal Connect. So that's basically, yeah, like Amazon Connect really, isn't it? And I didn't know that, that's cool. Even the much lauded Blue Sound No doesn't allow that, instead relying on Amazon's restricted third-party API. This also means the WIM can be used as a target device by Alexa, as well as being in a multi-room MRM group with Echoes and other WIM devices. Again, not many devices can claim that. There was more here. I'll leave it on the screen for another 30 seconds as I kind of ramble on here, but I'm not going to read it because I think that's a point well made. But Sneaky DS does end by saying, for Amazon Music HD users, never mind the other streaming services it supports, the WIM devices are a godsend. Now we come to, I think, perhaps the funniest comment that's been left on my channel for the last six months. And it comes from a chap called Ferris. Again, I assume it's a chap. And he writes, buttons on the pro version are on the side because of you. They wanted you to put a door stopper on top, which I think is pretty amusing actually, yeah. Yeah, so on the top of my Win Pro is a door stop. I get asked this question so many times, even though I do put links to it in the description box below. And I say more info in the description box below. So here's a question for you guys. Why is it that so many of you ask questions that are answered in the description box and I've already pointed you to the description box? I'm genuinely interested. I wanna know how I can help you find that description box more easily. Okay, now we come to the spicy finding and it comes via a question from a chap called Saul Hyman. And he writes, thanks John, I'm a huge fan of your videos and as ever, this is another great one. Thank you. Do you know if you can plug in your TV to the optical and use it to play TV sound into an analog amp, a bit like HDMI on the node? Okay, so there are two things here. Number one, and this really relates to the previous question really, is I tackled this in the video, Saul. I'm really sorry, Saul, but you're asking a question that was already answered in my video. However, the spicy part of this equation is that when we do use the WIM Pro as a DAC for our TV, so we come Toslink out of the TV into the Pro and then analog out of the Pro into a hi-fi system, I discovered something that I didn't like. When I was making the original WIM Pro video, I was doing it in a bit of a hurry 
because I was squeezing it into my existing schedule. I didn't really have time to tackle it, which is why it was kind of a part news item, part review, part award assignation. But I was, I was in a rush. So when I was testing the DAC with my TV, I was just using Apple Music as the source really from my TV. But what I didn't do was play a YouTube video. So when I did get to playing a YouTube video, ultimately I think the day after the WinPro video went up, I looked at the screen and I thought, hang on a minute, there's something not right here. And then I realized what it is, is that there's some kind of audio latency going on inside the WinPro because the voice and the image, or rather the sound and the image, are out of sync when using the WinPro as a DAC for a TV. So there must be what, maybe, it must be at least 30 milliseconds because I think that's the, the threshold of human perception when it comes to voice sync. So maybe even higher. So to me, it's unwatchable. So then I thought, hang on a minute, let me just try Toslink into the Pro from my TV and then we'll go Toslink out into a DAC. Is there still a latency issue? Yes, there is. So really, I can't recommend the Win Pro as a TV DAC. I'm going to have to wind it back. Or rather, I can't recommend it for people who don't have a latency adjustment setting inside their TV. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the Win Pro. That's all I have to say about the Win Pro, period. I won't have time to do another bit of coverage on it before the end of the year. I still think the Wim Mini is the sweet spot here or the best value, but obviously if you want the extra features that the, the Pro gives you, then by all means, have at it. Yes, the Wim Mini is still my favorite music streamer of 2022. 2022? Yeah, I can't even say it. 2022. I'm losing my mind today. 2022. And yeah, so if you can tolerate me losing my mind, then please give us a like down below or give this video a like down below. If you like my attitude towards follow-up videos like this one, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.